if the mold man had somehow came out of the coffin and dragged it back to the original resting place. But that was physically impossible, wasn't it? Nevertheless, a close look at the corpse and the fallen mold made everyone present shiver. Once again, the body was laid to rest in the mausoleum. And this time, the funeral director brought in... This is the tale of the lurking lichen of Ligonier. The horse clopped down the dirt road. It slowed its progression as it rounded a bend at the next corner. All of a sudden, the horse came to a full stop. The creature was much bigger than a wolf. It was four foot tall to the shoulders. It presented a most formidable and frightening appearance. It was the eyes that frightened him the most. It was on November 20th, 2016, when an unidentified man walked into WCHS, a local West Virginia news station. He claimed to have taken pictures of the legendary Mothman of Point Pleasant, West Virginia. The pictures are grainy at best, and depict what appears to be a two-legged humanoid flying in the sky above treetops. For more than two centuries, the ghost of a young woman named Barbara Davison has haunted the area around Candleton Road in northern Beaver County. She would meet a grisly demise after her killer took her life and her head. Barbara's decapitated head was never found, nor was her killer. She would become known as the Big Lady, a phantom that has interacted with many over the passing years. Hello. Uh, James, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, I can hear you. That's great. That's great. I love the idea. Your secret's safe with me. I, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah, keep that secret. <laughs> you know, one of the great things about podcasting is you could be sitting in your slippers and pajamas. Nobody would know. This is James Creesbaum Jr., and you're listening to Tony Lavornia's Legends and Lore Podcast. You know, um, we all strive, at least I strive every day for God's grace, and I'm not perfect by no means. You know, when I go into these things, I need three days, I fast, I prepare myself mentally, physically, and spiritually, because I know a fall is going to come. It hits me all all ways, man. It's, it's, people don't, that that's the stuff people don't see or know, but believe me, I it's a beating, and it wears on you, tears on you. experienced the same thing, but we weren't as willing to give up. The history of this location included some possible missing people, a missing waitress that was never found. These spirits actually gave us locations on the property as to where, you know, possibly some things are actually there. We've interviewed local people. It all adds up 100%. host for Tony Lavorna's Legends and Lore. Today, I'm out in beautiful Greene County, and we're going to be talking to a very highly skilled set of paranormal investigators. Outsider paranormal. To my left sits a beautiful Wheeling Creek. <laughs> Down the road over my left shoulder was the Crow family, who had wonderful young children 
that often traveled this road long ago. The Crow family would come from their property, walking along this road by where the Wheeling Creek forks, going on their way sometimes to visit other families in the area, and as well, I'm sure, to pick supplies from the local fort, which was located in Prosperity, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, with me is Damon Keith. How are you, Damon? I'm doing great, Tony. How are you? Fantastic. Also with me is Fred Tennant. Hi, Tony. How are you today, sir? Fantastic. Thanks for coming out and sneaking around the back. Who we got here, Mark Milligan. Hi, guys. How are you? Good, Tony. Good. Fantastic. Damon, for our listeners at home and across the world, can you begin to tell us a little bit about the events that led up to the attack on May 1st, 1791, an event that would become known as the Crow's Rock Massacre. And as they were on their way home, the girls began to tarry and they were kind of playing around a little bit and their brother Michael decided that he was going to go ahead. He wanted to get home. And so, as many times they had done before, Michael went on ahead, not thinking anything of it. But unbeknownst to them, there were a group hiding behind the rock, which is now known as Crow's Rock, and it was Again, with this tale, that isn't the only family members of the Crow that perished that day because of the Native American uh, Indians once they attacked. Uh, Also, I believe you told me earlier, uh, there were brothers that also belonged to the family, and they made some pretty grisly fates as well. Why don't you tell our listeners about that? Yes, uh, throughout the whole course of this. On location at Dead Man's Hollow in Elizabeth Township, Boston, PA. And tonight with me will be Investigator Becky Trafcolini from Cripple Creek and the OPIT, Ohio Paranormal Investigation Team out of Ohio. It's roughly a little after 7.20 in the evening. You can see the gullies and crisscross paths, the beautiful surrounding trees and waterfalls, not like the industry, which is fading away by the vegetation. There is something else that is refusing to fade away here, and that would be that of the spirits who are said to haunt this region. All right, everybody, we're going to bob for apples. If you go over by the blue tent over there, I know it's a little chilly, but let's see who can get an apple. Mike was saying that uh, we had some real good times over here at the Snap Apple Contest. So if anybody wants to look silly, I guess, go try to bob for apples. And there's there's some prizes and things. This is for anybody, not just the kids. I want to thank everybody that had fun at the apple bobbing contest. That was a lot of fun. All right, so we just got done with apple bobbing. There's still some apples if anybody wants to try it, but we're about to start Ghost Face. It's really messy. It's really funny. So come on back if you want to see this. And now, on behalf of the Social Voice Project, your host for the evening, Tony Lavorna. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to be here with you tonight. We're going to tell some ghost stories. We're going to try to get them all in. Looks like the weather is going to cooperate for, well, pre-Halloween. So let's get down to it. Legends exist as a dark mirror to the American culture, reflecting fears, concerns, and sometimes even our hidden history. At the same time, they are difficult to define. Welcome, everyone. I'm Tony Lavorna, and this is Tony Lavorna's Legends and Lore. It's a cold night here on this November night in Pennsylvania, and some would say that the weather could chill you like the bone. Well, just like this weather, so can the tales from the regions of this place. This evening, I will be stepping through the history of Barbara Davison, also known as the Headless Pig Lady of Camelton Road. And tonight joining me will be the ladies and gentlemen of the O 
OPIT. That's the Ohio Paranormal Investigation Team. And we are going to take you on a journey from the apple orchards to the foundations to some of the legends along with this tale. So get ready and here we go. Barbara, do you know who it was that killed you? Okay, now I'm going to play this back. What we're going to attempt to do is now play the recording back to see if anything was picked up on the reading. Hello? My name is Missy. I brought a group of people with me tonight. We have multiple things that you can use here to communicate with us. We are trying to make contact with Barbara. Are you here with us right now, Barbara? Barbara, there's been many people who believe they've seen your spirit around here. Is there something that you need to communicate to us? There's something there. Did you hear that? There is something about three, like about roughly three minutes in. That you need to communicate to us? Let me go back to Melissa. They think they found something. Did you hear something on the tape? It definitely says, help me. I'm not sure how good the mic will pick it up. But I asked her a question, and you can hear the weeds rustling. Okay. Just about three seconds after it gets good and quiet, you right. hear clearly, help me. People who believe they've seen your spirit around here. Is there something that you need to communicate to us? You see, you hear the words, right help me. Hear. Is there something that you need to communicate to us? You see, you hear the words, right help me. Hear. We're going to clear this much. We're going to clear this up for you, ladies and gentlemen, much better. Is there something that you need to communicate to us? You see, you hear the words, right help me. Help me. You do hear the words, help me. Very interesting. We're going to do conduct a little more investigating of this spot here. We are then going to go to another site a little further down in just a few moments. Eddie, let's go back over to you a moment. Um, you had the device. I'm going to just step over here. Eddie, where are you? Yeah, we picked up roadway, bed, and catch. Okay, a couple seconds ago, we got a recording and we got a response. Definitely somebody is asking for help. Could you let me know, is this Barbara or is this somebody else? What Melissa is looking for are spikes actually on the phone itself it shows and indicates whenever something is being picked up that may be inaudible to our human ear okay everybody stand real still please okay a couple seconds ago we got a recording and we got a response definitely somebody is asking for help I didn't get it. nothing that time okay well we're going to conduct a little bit longer for a moment and then we are going to go on to the next site in just a moment ladies and gentlemen i'm here now i think is the words that we're saying i'm here now Did you hear it? i'm here now it sounds like a male though doesn't it so are we looking for the ghost of barbara davison or perhaps her unknown killer the words seem to say i'm here now Hello, Barbara. It's us again. We're still help trying to figure out what happened to you, and we would love to see your killer be discovered, even though it's too late now to punish him. A lot of people think that your killer may have been a man named Reno. If it's that man, could you let us know just by saying yes or no? Did somebody say no? Did one of you guys whisper right here behind us? 
Okay, well, me and Michelle both heard that, so let's see if we caught it. It's kind of like that. Is that how you heard it? Like, a, I don't know. If it's that man, could you let us know just by saying yes or no? So perhaps then things have taken a turn for her. the worst here is perhaps we're talking to the the perpetrator of the crime perhaps we're not going to gather up and go on to the next site and we'll see what happens stay tuned okay we're here again still trying to communicate with Barbara I think we might have actually spoke with Renault. Renault, are you here? Is Barbara yeah, here? That's very common. So what are we hearing? We're hearing like a clicking or interference of some sort. It's an electronic interference. So I believe there was a spirit that was trying to use this, but probably just not realizing how. We've picked it up quite a few times during investigations, and it's just like a weird interference, and then it'll go away. Is there anything you need to tell us right now? Let's see, it's like them trying to respond. So, as we sit at this location and we lament over the things that we learned tonight, we have no definitive answer on who killed Barbara Davison. Perhaps that'll be a mystery for the ages one of many in this rather interesting and lonely place in Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tony Lavorna, your host for Tony Lavorna's Legends and Lore. I would like to thank the ladies and gentlemen of the OPIT team tonight. Please give us a rate, like, and listen, and we are a part of the Social Voice Project. Have a good evening. <laughs>